Um, hi, everyone. So uh, welcome to join uh, my session. So today I'm going to uh, discuss the new feature for locks, sensor locks, generic SSO framework. So I'm not going to uh, talking about one specific SSO solution. And as a device provider, uh, we develop the framework which is generic to support all SSO solutions. And so today, uh, I'm going to uh, 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 introduce how it works and how to join us to make your SSO works and also make your application to work with uh, the IDPs and work with uh, and make your application running perfectly on sensor locks. Okay. And uh, first of all, let's discuss some. Uh, mobile trend uh, related to identity access management. And mobile accessing to uh, critical enterprise resources is explosively uh, increasing. And every day, employees are uh, accessing uh, to your enterprise resource uh, from the tablet or from uh, smartphones. And when um, the traffic is from mobile, and from everywhere, the first problem to IT admin is how to manage the identity and how to control your access. So IAM is the first concern to IT, right? And um, I mean, think about uh, millions of uh, devices and a lot of uh, identities the IT admin to need to uh, manage and deal with. And, if you uh, require the employee to type the password, username, password for each application and each device, it doesn't work, right? So that's why SSO is deployed to tackle this problem. And single sign-on uh, currently has deployed uh, many work with uh, web, app, uh, web apps. And for native app support, currently still have no uh, simple solution of doing that. And we uh, work with uh, multiple identity providers. And uh, they have uh, very good solutions and to support native apps. For example, we work with CA Technology and they are seven, right? And uh, we work with Microsoft Arrow and we work with Centrify and we also support Kerberos. And they can support uh, the native apps and they can support the uh, private applications and also the cloud-based applications. Uh, but the protocols they are using and they support uh, are, are quite uh, 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 different. I mean, for, uh, they support SAML 2.0 uh, and they support OAuth, they support OpenID, and some of them support Kerberos also. And the APKs, uh, the SDK, the API, they expose also various. And to make things simple, and we are thinking how to um, just create a framework and bring all IDPs together and make them to work on Samsung Logs Enterprise platform. Right? And to, uh, at the very beginning of this project, we got the challenges from um, our business team and marketing. And when they talk to our customers, they are saying, um, we uh, deploy the SSO solution to support uh, SAML. And some of them are saying we support Kerberos only. And others may say uh, we support OAuth. So then they uh, ask me the question, how to satisfy the customer requirement of supporting multiple SSO in our Knox platform. And the second challenge is from our partners, the ISV partners. And I remember clearly uh, when the first time I went to Box, I asked, I asked them to create one version for Samsung Knox. So they almost say, no way, because they have cre created so many versions for different IDPs and different MDM vendors. 
right? So, I mean, it's very uh, 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 resource consuming for them to create a specific version for specific SSO solution. Then, oops, <laughs> sorry. So, oh, okay, it's back. The second question is, how can we satisfy ISV requirement of a single version? Focus on single. Single version can talk to any IDPs. That means the, the ISV providers, uh, the application providers, they just need to create one version and work on Samsung docs. And they can deliver to any customers to work with any IDPs. So that's what we are doing now. We have a, uh, uh, so we, uh, after this motivations, we fear generic SSO framework is urgently required. And you can think, consider um, this SSO framework as the bridge in the middle, and we connect IDPs from the left side and ISV from the right side. So any ISV application can talk to any of the IDPs. Okay. So the, op the design objectives of generic SSO framework it has a uh, has several uh, I mean four main requirements. First one support multiple SSO solution. Second one that one single version of ISV app can talk, work with multiple SSO solution. And the SSO should be for all users. That means inside the Lux container, it should work. And outside container, it should also work. Okay? And this platform should be secure enough to manage the token, the certificate. And the workflow should be also secure enough. So before uh, introducing uh, how the technical, uh, uh, how, how te technical uh, generic SSO work, I want to demo and that, that you get the first experience how cool it is. All right, so can you switch to uh, number two? All right, let's go to Samsung Locks container. Okay. Number two. This one. Cool, yes. All right. So, and these two funds, one enforced with CA Tech Layer 7 SSO solution, this one. And this one enforced with Centrifuge SSO solution, okay? So, this one, and this click box, here we go. You can see this screen, uh, credential screen, is popped up by CA Authenticator. So we have the Authenticator dedicated for CA uh, Layer 7 solution. And we sign in. And in the meantime, it will go to uh, CA server, uh, IDP server, get the token back, and then the box will use the token to identify in their server and get the service back, see? So with single sign-on, if I launch second or other, or other applications, it should not ask you to log in, to type the username and password again. It should directly log in, right? Okay. And it's bridgings, and then you can Join the meeting. And the same thing should happen for KiteWorks. All right. So all of them are work. Is that interesting? <laughs> all right. So can you switch to number one now? So 
I will use exactly the same ISV apps to work with Centrify SSO solution. Okay, because I premise one single version. This win credential is popped up by uh, Centrify SSO authenticator. Signing. All right, cool. Done. Let's launch Bluejeans. Okay, knocking. All right, let's knock on. And go to KiteWorks. So, <laughs> Very brave. Right, so uh, can you switch back to my size? And I will tell you now how this magic happened. <laughs> so we, we have the uh, one system service running on Samsung device, okay? GSF, generic SSO framework. We provide APIs to enterprise app to MDM to IDPs. So if you are the IDP provider and I mean SSO provider, then you should get the SDK and create the authenticator and plug in, I mean install in the, 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 the device. Then you will be XYZ authenticator. And if you are the uh, application provider and create your app and just uh, with the very simple API call and put in enterprise apps and call our framework, and then now your your app will have single uh, SSO feature. And if you are MDM agent, because you require, uh, I mean, the enterprise require the IT control, right? So you want to provision generic SSO uh, framework, then you should get the, uh, the SDK for MDM. So the main parts are uh, four components. And the system service is like uh, the control center and control the workflow and to uh, also do the uh, secure token management. Right. And we are uh, have the centralized management for the uh, whole SSO workflow. And also, we have the uh, flexible support for all partners. And this is the one sample workflow uh, in real uh, usage scenario. The, I, the MDM, the IT admin, will enroll the SSO and also do some configuration for the applications. And when then you launch the application, the first thing it will do is call get token from our asset, uh, from our framework. And the framework will talk to the IDP authenticator. And IDP authenticator then go to the remote server, get the token back. And then you, we return back to the uh, ISV app. ISV app will use that token to, uh, sweet, to exchange the open token or access token from their backend server. Right. And then that's what you, ask, you, you just saw. So we uh, provide uh, a, several application uh, APIs for each partner. So for ISV partners, we uh, provide uh, these three APIs. So in most cases, uh, developers will use the first two, get user info and get security token. Okay. And for IDP uh, partner, we provide the API for token 
or certificate management, you can uh, save your token or certificate to our secure token manager. And you can also get back. <coughs> and for MDM, we provide the API to control uh, for SSO enrollment and also uh, the white, white list application configuration. Also, we provide the false re-authentication and also the uh, set customer brand information. For example, uh, your customer uh, is Samsung Docs, and then uh, Samsung Docs would like to uh, see the, 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 their logo to be pop up when you ask the user to type the username password, right? That, that's cool. And we support, uh, we, we have a, a lot of ways for our partner to let their uh, product to be provisioned. For ISV applications, you can upload to Google Play, can be in App Store, okay? And uh, for ID, IDP authenticators, you can upload to Samsung Docs portal. For MDM agent, the same, to Logs portal. And uh, all the SDKs can be downloaded from Samsung Logs. And it's very simple to join us. Go to samsungdocs.com to register and as our developer. Eh? Then you download the SSO SDK, and we have the sample codes. We have the very well-prepared documentation. And then you wrap up your application. Just a very simple API call. And then you're done. And then upload to Play Store or Samsung App Store. Now you are locked SSO ready. OK, so I think my presentation is pretty much done. And the last session, we'll be talking about things. So the, uh, some security feature, right? And very, very cool feature. And, the pre and if we, I, I want to hold, hold the word to Tim Bang. And thank you very much. And if you have a question. After his session. So let's have a deep discussion. Thank you, Haichin. <clears throat> okay, so okay. Okay, so uh, I guess uh, before I start my session, I would like to uh, introduce a little bit about uh, myself. So um, my name is Ding Ban. Uh, I work in the obviously in the Nox team. So it's an enterprise solution for uh, mobile security, and. Uh, um, specifically, I'm works uh, in the uh, SE for Android uh, team. So we are responsible developing security policies for Knox workspace. And we are also <coughs> uh, working on the, some of the framework uh, changes about uh, SE Android related uh, uh, improvement and uh, some of the features. So oh, <coughs> I, has, I have been working Samsung Mobile for a few years. And uh, <coughs> uh, the Knox, I think, uh, I joined the team uh, since uh, probably a little bit after the Knox project was launched. So right now it's uh, a little bit more than two years. So that's, uh, that's like my experience at uh, Samsung. So today uh, I'm gonna uh, talk about uh, the uh, Seamus. It's a lightweight API for application and the data protection in Samsung Knox uh, platform. So in today's agenda, I'm going to talk about uh, a little bit of background about uh, SIMS, and then I'm going to talk about uh, some of the system design, the basic idea, and uh, also introduce SIMS API. And the last, we will hold the question and the answer session. So if you have any questions. <coughs> so uh, uh, why we need SIMS? So basically, we all know that uh, uh, mobile uh, smartphones play a very important role in this enterprise environment. Okay, so <clears throat> we have some enterprise applications need uh, special protection. For example, if you have enterprise payload apps, or you have uh, <clears throat> the data need to be uh, protected, and also we would like to uh, protect the uh, app components. Okay, <clears throat> to uh, 
to help us to protect these uh, data and resources. Okay, uh, we think it's very necessary to have uh, uh, to have to sandbox uh, a group of enterprise apps. Okay, so <coughs> Nox actually is a comprehensive security solution to protect uh, uh, enterprise apps. Uh, Seamus is, is part of the Nox. Uh, we provide actually it's a lightweight solution to help enterprise to protect their app data resources as well as their app components. Okay. So we use, uh, still we try to use a container mechanism to sandbox enterprise apps. Okay. Uh, app data and the resources, they are protected by SE Linux. Okay. So we call SE Linux a mandatory access control mechanism. So if some of you guys are familiar with uh, SE Linux, you may know that uh, <coughs> SE Android also, uh, SE Linux has been migrated to S Android platform so that uh, uh, the mandatory access control uh, mechanism has been applied to Android platform. We can use this SE Android uh, policy and the mechanisms to help protect uh, our apps, demons, services, all kinds of stuff okay, in Android platform. So we also uh, would like to protect the app components, okay? For example, intense when you start activity or something like that. So we uh, use the Samsung middleware mandatory access control mechanism. I'm gonna introduce this in the later slides. Uh, so uh, we take advantage of these two different mechanisms and uh, trying to create a suite of APIs, we call it SIMS. SIMS actually stands for SE for Android Manager Service, okay, uh, for our lightweight container creation and management. So basically, two different mechanisms have been used, SE Linux mandatory access control and uh, Samsung middleware mandatory access control mechanism. Both have been applied to uh, <coughs> this uh, uh, technique. Uh, notice this, uh, 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 we all know Nox workspace, right, but uh, 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 Seamus is a part of the Nox uh, overall um, uh, comprehensive solution, uh, but the Seamus itself can be applied independently. So it can be, it where <coughs> I think it can be, uh, it has already been applied by some of our partners to uh, uh, protect their enterprise apps and uh, resources, okay, and also app components. So in the Nox uh, workspace, uh, actually the isolation is under the uh, multiple user framework. Okay, it's provided by Android. Okay, uh, and the Seamus actually we use the SE for Android access control mechanism to provide a data resource uh, <coughs> isolation. So this is the big picture of how Seamus play a role. Okay, in the overall Nox uh, SE for Android architecture. Okay, so in the highest level. We have uh, different types of apps or daemons. Okay, we have untrusted app, which could be from any third party or app store. We also have some uh, system or platform or release apps, which is sent by some special key. And we also have Nox uh, workspace, okay, which is our comprehensive solution to protect enterprise uh, mobile environment. We also have, like say, third party containers or some daemons. Okay, under this highest level, we have the framework level, okay? So our middleware mandatory access control uh, is here, okay? So we basically uh, control the, <coughs> the inter-component uh, communication so that it is uh, uh, controlled by your policy, middleware Mac policy. And then behind that is our native apps. It may be used by your daemon, demons, okay? And then the lowest level is the kernel level. Uh, SE for Android uh, uh, policy enforcement is actually enforced by the kernel. Uh, <clears throat> you can uh, turn on the SE Android enforcement and also apply the uh, appropriate uh, SE Android policy to protect your mobile environment. So here, uh, our API actually needed to use both uh, mechanisms. One is the kernel level SE Linux uh, mandatory access control policy uh, protection. And also, we need to use Samsung middleware uh, mandatory access control policy. Okay. So before I introduce the details about this, uh, uh, <coughs> before I introduce the details about these uh, uh, techniques, I would like to first uh, give a little bit of background about SE Linux. 
So SE linear context and some related uh, uh, concepts. So in SE Linux, okay, we will have subject and object. So subject is like your process, your demons, okay. Object could be some of the files you would like to access. So SE Linux will assign uh, the context to subject and objects. Okay, here is some of the examples. Okay, so let's say I installed a, a app from App Store. Very likely it will use. Uh, it, is, uh, it will get the context of untrusted app. And it will also has, so in, SE, uh, in the SE Linux context, uh, it consists of uh, five parts. Okay, so you have user, role, domain or type, sensitivity, and the category. Okay, so in our first example, this untrusted app will get user U, role R, and the sensitivity is S0. In uh, which this, is, this one is actually a subject. Okay, it's an app. Second one actually is an object, okay? So it's an app data file. So it is uh, <coughs> from user yo lower object R, and it is a type of app data file, and it gets the sensitivity of S0, category C2, okay? So basically these five components uh, will become the uh, a context, and then when we can use policy to uh, control the access from the object, from the subject to the object, okay? So access control in the current setting of SE Android, okay? The U, U, R, user lower and also the sensitivity, they are all fixed. So basically what we can control is uh, domain type and the category, okay? So we can actually apply different domains types as well as categories to help protect our uh, enterprise apps. Uh, in order to uh, uh, protect our enterprise apps, we need to assign appropriate domains and types, uh, domains and categories to our subjects. And we also need to assign appropriate types and categories to the objects. Later, I'm gonna give a little bit more detail about this one. So for the Samsung middleware Mac, okay, so basically it is uh, uh, developed by our team and also, <clears throat> so it is used to control the inter-component uh, communication. So the, uh, in the um, <clears throat> uh, Samsung middleware Mac, actually we use, uh, uh, we need to use so-called source and destination uh, middleware Mac uh, categories. Okay, later I will have, I think I have a picture. Okay, so um, this category assignment is based on your uh, app's certificate and the package name. Okay, so, uh, Mm, and then later you can apply the uh, middleware Mac policy to control the inter-component uh, uh, communication. All the intents and content providers, okay, so you will allow those if the M <coughs> middleware Mac category condition matches. So in, actually in a configuration file, you can specify what kind of uh, inter-component uh, communication you allow. Then our um, Framework will enforce this uh, uh, condition. I only allow those you, uh, you specified in the uh, configuration file. And uh, this, so as we said, the configuration is defined in a configuration file, okay. So this is a simplified version of how the middleware Mac works. Okay, let's say you have a source uh, uh, application. You would like to start the activity of a target uh, application. What happens is uh, uh, this uh, start activity information will be captured by the activity manager service, okay? So act activity manager service will uh, uh, check the mandatory access control policy to see if this uh, uh, is allowed or not. If it is not allowed, so if it's not allowed, it will through the security exception. If it's allowed, then the destination application, the activity will be started, okay? So the, the workflow will continue. So this is a, a very simple diagram shows how a middleware Mac works. So uh, let's talk a little bit about our system design. How do we take advantage of this uh, uh, SE Linux uh, mandatory access control as well as Samsung middleware mandatory access control, middleware access control to help us protect enterprise apps? So first of all, for the app data and the resource protection, as we said, if you would like to use SE Linux to help protect uh, app data and the resource, we will need to assign appropriate domain and types to the, to the apps as well as their data. Okay, so here I give some example. Let's say you would like to uh, uh, protect some of the uh, 
enterprise apps. So you can assign domain, say, enterprise uh, uh, container app. And you can also, sometimes you can, if it's required, you can also assign the category information to this uh, uh, SE Linux uh, labeling, okay? And then this is for the domain, so basically for the app domain. Uh, for the app-related data, you can also assign uh, some uh, SE Linux labeling. For example, here I assign enterprise container data file. So in other words, all the data uh, this uh, enterprise app of direct access, I can assign a special label so that uh, um, only this enterprise app can access this special label, meaning only an enterprise container app can access enterprise container app data file. Okay. So, you know, similarly, you can also assign the uh, category information to the uh, to the uh, uh, to your label. So, in addition to the types. So, the category actually, uh, if uh, if some of you guys are familiar with uh, uh, the, the multiple level security, so category is used in this security model. So, you can apply uh, different levels of security to your subject and object. Okay, so that uh, the access control is. Uh, uh, enforced by this uh, multiple level security okay, model. So SE Linux, um, SE Android, uh, uh, right now SE Android in the current uh, uh, Android platform uh, can support both, can support both uh, domain and the type labeling as well as the category based labeling. Okay, so, yeah. <clears throat> so what we did actually is take advantage of this mechanism and provide a special policy and customized policy to help uh, uh, enterprise to protect their apps okay, and the resources. So after we uh, create a special, say, domain label or data label for your enterprise apps, uh, we need to customize the enterprise policy to protect uh, uh, this uh, app and their data. Okay, so this is actually uh, through the policy uh, configuration file. Okay, one of the critical policy con configuration file is SE app context. So in SE Android, this SE app context will uh, define appropriate app domain as well as app data file types for your enterprise apps. Uh, next, actually, is you need to define, customize what kind of policy. For example, you can specify in your uh, type enforcement file saying only enterprise app can access enterprise app data file. Okay, so this policy has also has to be specified. Okay you need to define what subject can access what object. So basically that's what uh, policy says. So after you, after you uh, specify these uh, domains types as well as the customized policy, the SE Android uh, will enforce this, okay, so that your app is protected. Uh, for the app component protection actually is uh, what we just mentioned. So basically we use uh, middleware mandatory access control, okay? So we do the labeling about your apps. So we assign, actually we assign uh, so-called middleware Mac category to your, to your enterprise apps based on your package name and the certificate, okay? We also have a configuration file. Uh, you can specify your, <clears throat> you can specify uh, what kind of category you request. And then uh, we will enforce this and uh, our <coughs> activity manager service will, will enforce this and check the permission so that your app component communication is protected. So, that, so start activity component between apps in different categories will be controlled by this uh, 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 middleware Mac uh, policy. So here is just a very simple diagram shows uh, how do you actually use our, how do you uh, create a container uh, and also protect your enterprise apps. So what happens is uh, you can, let's say you can first create a container, okay, use our Sims API. And then you can use, also use our API to put your enterprise apps into uh, this container, okay. So we, I wish, tell you what is, uh, show you some of the example APIs in later page. So there are three apps has been added into your container. It's a lightweight container, it's a Sims container, okay? And they are protected, okay, and isolated by middleware mandatory access control mechanism as well as AC Linux policy, okay? We use both mechanisms to protect your enterprise app. 
so you can also sometimes you there is also a necessity to remove some of the apps from your uh, container. So we also provide API so you can remove the apps. Uh, once your, all the apps have been removed from a container, you can also destroy or deactivate uh, the, the container. Okay. So <clears throat> uh, let me uh, last in last a few slides I would like to introduce. Uh, uh, these APIs, okay, but in a very brief uh, sense, okay, for the complete uh, uh, version of our Sims API, you can take a look at our uh, Nox SDK, okay. So uh, our team actually developed uh, these APIs, okay, so uh, <clears throat> you can use these APIs to create containers, uh, to remove a container, to add some of the apps into a container, and to remove some of the apps to the container, okay. Once the apps uh, are put into the container, it will get a special protection from SE Android policy as well as uh, middleware uh, mandatory access control policy. Simus uh, is pretty lightweight, as we mentioned earlier, so um, um, it has already been used by some of our partners. Um, this one just shows you uh, some, of the, uh, some of the example APIs, okay? So if you would like to use a special domain and the types, to uh, protect your enterprise API. So these are the four core APIs you may need to use. So you can activate the domain, okay? You can add apps into this domain. You can also remove apps from uh, this special domain. And uh, once this, you don't need this uh, uh, app, you don't need <coughs> any protection, you can even deactivate this domain, okay? So the workflow is like this, okay? So first of all, you, in order to use this, so first of all, you can First, install an MDM agent, okay? And then you, we, need, you, we need to check the license to see if you have, uh, if you have the permission. Uh, if everything is okay, then we, you can use our, use our API to, uh, use our Sims API to actually create a container, to add up to the container, to um, remove up to the container, and to destroy the container, things like that. So to do the whole of, uh, life cycle of the container management, okay? Once the apps is in the container, we will provide a special policy and also the extra protection, including the SE Linux uh, mandatory access control and the middleware Mac policy to protect your app. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> so you can also use category-based uh, uh, API. So basically here we call it, uh, actually we call it a generic container. So, uh, but uh, the basic idea is uh, use the multiple level security uh, policy to help us uh, protect your enterprise apps. So it's, the API is very similar. You can also create the container. You can also add up to the container. You can also remove up to the container, and also you can uh, remove the whole container if it's not uh, if it's not needed. Okay. So uh, for the details of about these APIs. Uh, I would suggest you guys to go to our website. It's uh, uh, Samsung Knox, okay, www.samsungnox.com. You will see all the SDKs and all the details about this API, okay. Mm, so I, because I only have 20 minutes, so I guess I almost <laughs> running out of time. So, but, uh, so it's a very brief introduction. So if you have any questions, Hai Ching and I are happy to take any questions you may have. Thank you. I think suppose I have some. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, so any questions? <laughs> hmm? So, oh, yeah, yeah, yes, yes. So, any question related to SSO? <laughs> Do I, uh, do we uh, do something like transform, uh, transform the uh, token format something? No, no, we can't. So, yeah, you, you point out the very good question. Uh, we, we don't want to break 
the secure workflow. If we, so Knox can be reg, uh, re, regarded as a client side. So for single sign-on, if client side change something, then you have to make sure your re signature is meaningful. That's very critical. So we don't do that. So we get uh, the, for, let's take SAML as an example. We get the SAML assertion from IDP. And then we return the SAML back to the application. So only ISV server is able to decrypt and see what it is. Right, so that's how SSO works, right? So the applications will be uh, registering IDP first. So that means, so that's how we say it's federation SSO, enterprise SSO. So uh, in, in a demo, we show um, box, bridging, and, and kind of works. So the servers are different. The service provider are different. But they can recognize the same token. Okay, so I mean, because the IT admin will go to the portal, the IDP is portal, and register this application first. And then this, uh, this, uh, the, the backend, the ISV, uh, the service provider backend can recognize the token. Right. Exactly, right. So, and also, uh, I think peer uh, did a lot of work to try to establish the trust relationship among uh, IDPs and ISVs, and we like three-party play in, in in this ecosystem. Right. Right. Thank you. Uh, actually, the both left side and right side now is expanding. <laughs> right. And also today, I saw um, I can see uh, a lot of our good partners, and they join here. So, thank you very much. I mean, without your strong support, this demo can never happen. So, appreciate. <laughs> thank you. If no other questions, thank you. Oh, you have a question. <laughs> oh, continue. Uh -huh. okay. Right now, the enforcement has nothing to do with the correct? You mean type enforcement? Well, you have this middleware. Yeah, yeah. Middleware actually is not related to TE, but the SE, SE uh, Linux uh, label, that one with the domain and the types, is related to TE. Right. Yeah, so you need to customize your policy, so you include that. Right. But again, maybe an offline discussion. Sure. Okay, okay. Okay, okay, yeah. I'm this. Okay. What protection you put in in order to make sure nobody can change the labels of an application and pretend to be yeah, that's a very, application. That's a very good question. Okay, let's discuss offline. Okay. Okay. Thank you guys. Okay. Thank you. Okay. So, thank you very much. Okay.